is late, and the mood is fear. As two exhausted human beings crash through the underbrush and into a clearing, there is no pause in their flight, and a pain of ravening arms is hard on their hands. Vincent! Vincent, they're gaining on us! See? See, they come! Oh, Vincent, we're lost! No, Eric! Not if we can reach those trees yonder. Hurry, darling. Just a few paces more. Hurry! After an eternity of sickness. That's it, darling. Climb up as high as you can. I have a handhold, Vincent. Now, you come up. The man in the hose is complaining he's not yet safe. All caution is on the side as he reaches for a stout branch and prepares to defend his love by the sun. Hold! And like a blanket, calm and falls the once enraged dogs, and they trot off, docile and tame as household pets, to the feet of their master. Please, gentlefolk, do not be afraid. The dogs will do you no harm. I am to blame entirely for this terrible incident. It was senseless of me to continue hunting after the sun had gone down. Forgive me. And please allow me to make this up to you in some way. The stranger's voice is openly friendly, but not till Erica is safely on the ground does the man Vincent reply. You are a gentleman, sir. But you may wish you had not so quickly called off your dogs when you learn who I am. Then please tell me. I can stand the suspense no longer. My name is Vincent. I am the nephew, the very proud nephew of Baron von Frankenstein. This is my fiancée, Erica. In that case, you are the new Baron von Frankenstein, now that your uncle is dead which entitles you to the simple hospitality of my home for as long as you may desire it. Please accompany me. You must. If you insist. You are very kind, and we are exhausted. With his fiancée safely mounted on the horse of their new friend, the tension of the previous few days falls away, and soon the party comes in sight of a magnificent castle. My home, young Baron von Frankenstein, and yours, for as long as you would like to stay. You are too kind, sir. I fear you may not know of the events surrounding my uncle's death. I feel honor-bound to tell you of them before we cross the threshold of your home. I know the events, Baron. His experiments, the monster he created, the destruction the monster caused, and finally the enraged villagers who murdered... caused the death of your uncle. But you, you are merely his nephew. I merely. But a Frankenstein, nevertheless. And tainted. The villagers were not satisfied to murder my uncle. They came to my home at the dinner hour. They howled in rage as they burned my home to the ground. And in greater rage as Erica and I escaped in the confusion. We had been pursued, hounded from that moment. Ah, here we are. My home, Hilda. It's huge. I'm glad you are pleased, mademoiselle. This ordeal must have been terrifying for you. You must think a great deal of our young baron. I love him, sir. And if needs be, I will die beside him. If we can just keep them from finding our... Oh, Vincent. What Erica is most worried about is that if it is discovered that I actually assisted my uncle at times and know all the secrets which supposedly died with him, our pursuers will double in number and surely destroy us. Please, baron. Enough of this depressing talk. You shall both be. And after a comfortable dinner, we shall sip wine before my great fireplace, and all this will seem as though it happened in another world. Soon the new Baron Frankenstein calmly bathes. A calm which is broken by... Erica! Quickly, Vincent pulls on his pants and runs from the room. Erica! Erica, where are you? Erica! You need go no further, Baron. What you seek is through this door. Erica, is she in there? I thought I heard her scream. Was it Erica? His newfound friend stands in mute silence. Finally, Vincent brushes roughly past him and into the indicated room. What is this? It seems... Like a blast of cold air, the full impact of the room strikes Vincent Frankenstein. The room, except for minor differences, is the duplicate of his uncle's laboratory. The room in which his uncle created what became known as Frankenstein's monster... Explain this. No. First tell me where Erica is. Calm down, my good Baron. This laboratory represents my failure at the same experiment your uncle succeeded at. The same experiments you will succeed at if you ever expect to see your beloved again alive. 
In a blind rage, Vincent rushes past his betrayer. Look for her, if you will, fool! This castle has hundreds of rooms, dozens of tunnels, and miles of labyrinthian dungeons and torture chambers. She would starve before you could find her. That is, if I put her in an obvious place, and not behind some secret panel somewhere. No, Baron Frankenstein, you will not search for your missing Erica. You will build me a man, a slave to my will, and will start now, or your beloved Erica will never see the light of a new day. Uh, uh, all right, I'll do it. To escape the torture of not knowing, Vincent hurls himself into his sleepless work, creating a living man from dead bodies, which is now hated enemy supplies and abundance. No more bodies. I have all the parts I need. Where do you get all these bodies? And in such good condition? In heaven's name, man! I merely want you to be happy. I wouldn't supply you with inferior material. Am I correct in assuming that we are at the final stage? You are correct. But we will never complete that final stage until and unless I see Erica safe and unharmed. If I don't, I... Baron, please, please don't get overly dramatic. Mind your dials and gadgets like a good boy. And if you look to my left, you'll see your fiancé safe. Oh, Vincent! Enough! My, um, assistants will guard your Erica as you work, Baron. Do not make any false moves, or they will kill her. Make no mistake about that. I am too resolved to be stopped by false heroics. Move! With practiced fingers, young Baron Frankenstein manipulates his panel and finally throws the switch that controls the raw electricity. As the machine dies down, Vincent cranks the reclining body to an upright position. Is, is he alive? Did it work? He's not moving, not breathing. Give it some time. It could be hours before we know. An eyelid flutters open as the two men talk. <laughs> Good Lord, he's alive and enraged. His brain inflamed, the patchwork creature stumbles forward as his creator tries to restrain him. Stop! Sit down! Stop! Stop him, guards! Stop him, or it will mean your deaths! The two robed guards release Erica and lurch toward the raging creature. Subdue him, Cretans, before he reaches the door! cannot stop this monster. He smashes one guard and hurls the other with all his strength into the wall. And now he pauses. No one bars his path but the frail and beautiful Erica. Slowly he raises his eyes to hers and again moves forward. No! Stay away from her! Who can know the thoughts this monster has as he approaches? And now lifts the girl from the cold stone and over his head. No! Who can say if he thinks at all as he steps to the window ledge? and hurls the girl to her death and walks away from this now silent room leaving a man whose mind reels and heart shrivels in his chest. Erica! Erica! She's dead. No, she's moving, I think. Oh, help her, help her. She's alive but broken. She looks so helpless. Count, this is your doing. Help her, please. I'll do anything to repay you, please. I beg of you. Without a word, the evil host steps up to the window, raises his face to the moon, and parts his lips. First, an answering growl drifts upward. Then a shadow breaks free from the darkness of the forest and trots quickly to the side of the moaning Erica. As it becomes more distinct to Vincent's unbelieving eyes, his worst dreams become reality. It has the form of a wolf, but its gray color, its bearing implies a more fearsome presence. The presence of... It's attacking her, and she's helpless. No! No! Good luck! In his hysterical state, Vincent hardly feels the hand which steals behind his neck and clenches. There is a brief shock as he slips nerveless to the floor, and blackness enfolds him. Back on the ground, Erica has survived the attack of the werewolf, and though unconscious, her breathing is regular. There she is. She seems so still. Don't worry, she's alive. 
Talk, Baylor. Gather her up and bring her along. Yes, Grandmother. Ah, uh, all right. We've got her. She's very beautiful, Grandmother. Yes, now. Hours later, Erica slowly regains consciousness. Oh. Come, come, child, wake up. You have slept long enough. There is much to do. Wake up. Oh, where am I? How did I get here? Oh, I've had such nightmares. What is happening to me? You are in a gypsy camp, and I am Maliva, queen of the gypsies. And you, you are here to serve and make your place till the end of your days. What? What are you saying? Oh, Vincent. Vincent, where are you? I need you. This is insane. Please, tell me, this is all a dream. Girl, girl, silence. This is no dream, nor will it end. You will stay here and you will work, or you will be beaten till you beg for mercy. Now, go and begin your chores, or so help me, the beatings will begin right now. Move along. All through the morning and hot afternoon, Erica toils into the cruel discipline of Bela, Maliva's grandson, as Maliva herself watches with a veil. That's it. That's it. Make her work for her keep. <laughs> Finally, as the sun goes down, Erica is allowed to rest, chained. Weariness brings its own security, and as she begins to doze off on the ground behind one of the wagons, she fails to hear the clumsy footfalls until... What? Who is it? Who is that? Please. Please, Missy. Please, it's me, Tor. I would not harm you. You are like a flower. I, I have brought some broth. I will leave if you wish me to. I just thought. Oh, no, Tork. Don't leave. You're right. I do need some food. Thank you. Your hand. The pentagram. Dropping the broth, Tork spins and rushes away from the helpless female. Naked fear etched upon his face. Tork, what is it? Why do you run? The pentagram. The pentagram. And the moon is full tonight. Erica looks at her hand and the symbol of the pentagram which now appears there. Her mind drifts back to a poem she once heard. Even a man who is pure of heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolf mane blooms and the moon is shining bright. Some say Bela is insane and the menacing whip he carries adds to this theory. Why would he beat a chained and helpless prisoner? Why does he wait till the night to accomplish his loathsome ends? As he steps into the shadows, he hears a sound which tells him that never again need these questions be asked. The sound of the werewolf. No! No, stay away! Bela turns to run. Ah! His intended victim, Erica, strikes him down with one deadly blow. No more a frail human woman. In her stead, a full-grown, enraged werewolf. Almost immediately, Bela's cry brings the gypsies from their wagons. Werewolf! No! There it is! Everyone, attack! Grab her! Pull her down! You can't fight all of us! Get her! Bring her down! Erica's rage drives them back on the ground. Suddenly, a new sound attracts everyone's attention. It's... <laughs> recognition fills the gypsies' eyes and they step aside to reveal... A second werewolf, a powerful grey werewolf, and now rumbles its challenge to Erica. The grey wolf attacks with the speed of thought, and soon the two human canines are locked in mortal combat. The savagery of their battle is insane, as every new wound they inflict repairs itself almost immediately. Unnoticed, the 
Mafia stirs in the shadows, and the grim daylight rises from the dust. Determination to gain revenge drives him to raise his pistol, and with his last breath, fire the silver bullet and crack it. It strikes the gray wolf. Eric stands and stares as the gray wolf becomes the gray mafia. More guns and more silver bullets come into the hands of the gypsies. Erica flees into the woods. Somewhere in her animal mind, she realizes that these gypsies have battled werewolves before. So she runs. Leaving her pursuers far behind, her flight soon brings her to a somehow familiar castle. A castle whose sight draws her closer and urges her to enter. Easily, her animal form clambers to an upper window that looks into a deserted hallway. She pauses, sniffing the air, then jumps to the floor onto all fours. She scans her surroundings at a glance, then begins padding toward the only light source, which is at the end of the hall. Human voices alert Erica, who approaches more slowly now. It's no use. We'll never capture him. Stop whining, you fool. You've lost your love, but not yet your life. The monster's had a full day to calm down. Help me restrain him, or you will spend yet another day in my dungeon, Baron Frankenstein. In her ears, that hated voice must be stilled forever. <laughs> rage controls Erica's canine body as she hurls herself upon the master of this castle. <laughs> Erica is thrown from him as though she were a puppet. You dare! You dare lay your paws on me! On me! <laughs> Low beast, you die for this! Die at the hands of the Prince of Darkness! For I. Am Dracula! Oh, my Lord, what have I done? You, Baron Frankenstein, have done nothing but obey my will and do my bidding as I compelled you to do. The monster stands quietly and listens also. Do you know why you created this monster? This slave for me? Did you for one minute question what I would do with this creature? For this reason, Frankenstein, I am helpless in the daytime, like a sleeping babe. I need a strong, mindless slave to protect my sleep so that I might wake at night and prowl for the blood that sustains me, the blood of innocent victims to quench my undying thirst. As though awakened from a long sleep, the monster's lip curls and he reaches out to grasp the throat of Dracula. <coughs> Lifting the vampire into the air, he effortlessly dashes into the ground. Horror stretches the eyes of Vincent Frankenstein as the vampire, unhurt, Rises, revealing an evil grin, and attacks the man-made monster and claws for its throat. This mere creature, this man thing was born of the elements. His superhuman hands clamp once again on the throat of Dracula. Silently, each squeeze the throat of the other, and tiring fingers probe past the neck muscles, seeking wind pipes, spine, arteries. He's swimming! What? Dracula, and he begins to transform himself into a giant bat. Let go! Let go! I'm free! Dracula frees himself and flies upward and toward Vincent, intent on escape. The face of Erica flashes through Vincent's mind. Grim determination sets his jaw as he reaches for an urn of burning embers and hurls it full in the face of Dracula. <laughs> Screaming in pain, he flies up, circles, then dives straight into the monster. Tumbling into the laboratory, the two figures smash into chemicals and equipment, which ignite into a blazing inferno. Fire! Tremendous heat! I'll be burned alive! Maybe it will be just as well. Without Erica, I might as well be dead! No, I can't lose hope. She might still be alive. But as Vincent turns to leave... The werewolf blocking my path. It's confused by the fire. It'll do us both if it doesn't move. No! I must try to reason with it. Wolf. Listen to me. That fire will kill us. We must go. I can show you the way. We'll die if we stay here. 
irrational thought lights the werewolf's eyes. Don't you understand? It's stepping aside, letting me pass. It does understand. It must hurry before those chemicals explode. Hurry, wolf, hurry. The flames are spreading. We only have seconds. We made it. No, don't stop. The whole place is about to collapse. There she goes. The castle mushrooms upward and then collapses in upon itself. Tis done. And now, Wolf, what of the two of us? Will you try to devour me? What? Something's happening. You're changing, transforming, becoming familiar. Oh, Lord. Erica! Erica, my darling! How can this be? No. No, tis enough. You are here. Here. Put on my cloak. Oh, Vincent, it was horrible. Horrible! I can hardly bring myself to think of it. Don't think about it for a while. Just think that we are safe and alive and that the sun is rising on a new day. Our day. But my, this thing that will... You mean your werewolfism. My love, do not fear it. I know a man, a doctor, who has cured this condition. We shall find him and we shall defeat this thing together. We have come through a night of unending terror and it has come to an end.